Welcome to the Court Square virtual tour. Today we'll be exploring the history of Albemarle County, the history of Court Square, and the history of the markers and the artifacts that lie within it. Let's get started. Albemarle County was founded in 1744 from a portion of Goochland County. It was named for the second Earl of Albemarle, Willem Ann van Keppel. The land that Albemarle was founded on was previously inhabited and occupied by the Monacan tribe. The historic marker pictured here reads, Near here, on both sides of the Rivanna River, was located the Monacan Indian village of Manasuka Panau. This village was one of five Monacan towns that Captain John Smith recorded by name on his 1612 map of Virginia, though many more existed. Manasuka Panau was a chief's village and was occupied for several centuries until it was abandoned in the late 17th or early 18th century. Monacan descendants still reside throughout the central Virginia area. The tribe's headquarters today is on Bear Mountain in Amherst County. On a Supa Canal, located on both sides of the Rivanna River on Polo Grounds Road, was abandoned by Monacan tribal members prior to the formation of Albemarle County as part of the tribe's efforts to maintain distance from European colonizers. Pictured here is a map of Virginia identifying the land occupied by the Monacan tribe that was drawn by Captain John Smith. The original county courthouse seat was located in Scottsville for 16 years. Pictured here is the original courthouse structure in Scottsville, which was surfaced during an archaeological dig. This photo was taken by the Daily Progress. In 1761, Albemarle was divided to form Buckingham and Amherst counties. Some of Louisa County was added to Albemarle as well. In 1762, the town of Charlottesville was established as a more centralized county seat. Dr. Thomas Walker, owner of Castle Hill Plantation and a physician, surveyor, explorer, farmer, friend, and neighbor of Thomas Jefferson, either sold or donated two acres for the courthouse. He also laid out 50 plots of land to be purchased for home or business use, which are currently sections of Market Street and the downtown mall. In 1762, a wooden courthouse was built by William Cabell using the bond of the enslaved laborers of John Fry, John Moore, and John Lewis, the cost was 375 pounds and 10 shillings. In 1803, a brick courthouse replaced the wooden structure. The rear or north portion dates from this time. The bricks used were most likely made on site or on nearby estates. The bricks feature sand from the river and clay nearby. The building also had a stone foundation and a roof made from shingles that were later replaced with tin. The courthouse has a large quantity of windows to allow for more natural sunlight. This is due to the expensiveness of candles at the time. Window sashes also open for air. The cupola, dome at the top of the roof, is original and used to serve as the circulatory system. Air would go in through the windows and out through the cupola. In 1859, a front portion was built in the Gothic Revival style. Two octagonal staircases were also built. In 1870, a portico, that's a porch with columns, was added. The portico was remodeled by the WPA, the Works Progress Administration, in the 1930s to conform to the northern portion and colonial revival style. This was paid for by the New Deal. The original grounds had whipping posts, stocks, and a pillory jail. Thomas Jefferson referred to the courthouse as a common temple in his letters. Various Protestant groups used the space to meet until more churches were built. A judge came to the courthouse twice a year. Citizens were appointed as magistrates to conduct preliminary hearings and judge minor offenses in the judge's absence. The courthouse was also used for voting done by voice, character recommendations, certification of soldiers' pensions, municipal record keeping, and slaves were often sold from the courthouse and surrounding properties. The largest slave auction at the site was part of Thomas Jefferson's estate sale. The courthouse was also used as a meeting space for the community. Organizations like the UVA Board of Visitors, the Albemarle Agricultural Society, and the Virginia Assembly all utilized the space. Notable Virginia Assembly members include Patrick Henry, Benjamin Harrison, Thomas Nelson, Richard Henry Lee, John Tyler, Daniel Boone, and Thomas Jefferson. The Ku Klux Klan also held meetings at the courthouse. Here, you can see an advertisement for a meeting in the Daily Progress. 
Court Square Park, formerly known as Jackson Park, was built from land deeded to be used for a park in 1919. The land used for Court Square Park was once McKee Row, a predominantly black inhabited housing area. The Albemarle County Board of Supervisors confiscated the land in the 1920s and gave it to the city of Charlottesville to build an all-white school. The board's justification for the confiscation of the land was to minimize the rowdy behavior of its residents. An article in the Daily Progress details the land confiscation and the intention to build an all-white school on the property, as well as the statue of Stonewall Jackson. First, we'll check out the Meriwether Lewis Memorial Marker. This marker was installed in September of 2009. It commemorates Meriwether Lewis's bust being installed into the Old Hall in the Virginia House of Delegates in August 2008 on his 243rd birthday. The marker contains a bas relief of the bust, a commemorative message, and a tribute penned by Thomas Jefferson. Here's how Jefferson describes him. Of courage undaunted, possessing a firmness and perseverance of purpose which nothing but impossibilities could divert from its direction, careful as a father of those committed to his charge, yet steady in the maintenance of order and discipline, intimate with the Indian character, customs, and principles, habituated to the hunting life, guarded by exact observation of the vegetables and animals of his own country, against losing time in the description of objects already possessed, honest, disinterested, liberal, of sound understanding, and of fidelity to truth, so scrupulous that whatever he should report would be as certain as if seen by ourselves. Now we'll visit the historic marker dedicated to Jack Jewett. This marker was erected by the Virginia Department of Historic Resources in 1998. It commemorates Jack Jewett's ride to warn the Virginia Assembly of approaching British soldiers. The marker currently sits across from the site of the former Swan Tavern, which was owned and operated by the Jewett family. The marker reads, On the 4th of June in 1781, John Jack Jewett Jr. arrived at the Albemarle County Courthouse to warn the Virginia legislature of approaching British troops. The state government under Governor Thomas Jefferson had retreated from Richmond to reconvene in Charlottesville because of the threat of the British invasion during the Revolutionary War. Jewett had spotted Colonel Bannister Tarleton and his 180 dragoons and 70 cavalrymen 40 miles east at Cuckoo Tavern and rode through the night to reach here by dawn. Jewett's heroic ride, which allowed Jefferson and all but seven of the legislators to escape, was later recognized by the Virginia General Assembly, which awarded him a sword and a pair of pistols. Next up, we're going to visit the Monticello marker. This marker was installed in 1928 by the Virginia Department of Historic Resources. The application for the marker was thought to have been submitted by the Thomas Jefferson Foundation to commemorate his home and legacy. The site of the marker linked to the Monticello Hotel, which opened across the street in 1926, but has since been converted into condos and office space. The marker reads, three miles to the southeast. Thomas Jefferson began the house in 1770 and finished it in 1802. He brought his bride to it in 1772. Lafayette visited in 1825, and Jefferson spent his last years there and died there July 4th, 1826. His tomb is there. The place was raided by British cavalry June 4th, 1781. There are some notable errors on the marker. Monticello is two miles away, not three. Construction began in 1769, not 1770. Construction ended in 1809, not 1802. Lafayette visited in 1824, not 1825. And Jefferson does not lie in a tomb, but is buried on site. Our next marker acknowledges the despicable history of lynching in America. This marker was installed as a collaborative effort of the Charlottesville Albemarle Community Remembrance Project, which includes local government, UVA, and community organizers and leaders. It memorializes the 1898 racial terror lynching of John Henry James, a Charlottesville city resident lynched in Albemarle County. The marker reads, thousands of African Americans were the victims of lynching and racial violence in the United States between 1877 and 1950. During this era, racial terror lynching of African Americans emerged as a stunning form of violent resistance to emancipation and equal rights for African Americans, intended to intimidate Black people and enforce racial hierarchy and segregation. Racial terror lynching was most prevalent in the South and was used to uphold white supremacy and enforce decades of political, social, and economic exploitation, 
Racial terror lynching became the most public and notorious form of subordination directed at Black people, was frequently tolerated or even supported by law enforcement and elected officials, illustrating the failure of the criminal justice system to afford Black people equal justice under law. White mobs were usually permitted to engage in brutal violence with impunity. Many Black people were pulled out of jails or given over to mobs by law enforcement officials who were legally required to protect them. Even without any evidence, whites' allegations against Black people often sparked violent reprisal. Terror lynchings often included burnings and mutilation, sometimes in front of crowds numbering in the thousands. Many of the victims of these acts of violence were not recorded by name and remain unknown, but over 84 victims were documented in Virginia alone. The site of the marker was selected because of the shared community history. Mr. James was posthumously indicted at the courthouse. The marker is a local extension of the National Equal Justice Community Remembrance Project. Next up is the statue at Ready. At Ready was installed in 1909 on an anniversary of the Monticello Guard Company. The statue is generic bronze, has a customized granite pedestal, and was made in Chicago. The Napoleon-style cannons seen were donated by the federal government. Both Union and Confederate soldiers used them throughout the Civil War. The Monument Committee was comprised of the Commonwealth's Attorney, Board of Supervisors Representatives, City Council, members of the Daughters of the Confederacy, and Confederate veterans. Funding for the monument was raised by special tax levied by Albemarle County, a contribution of general re revenues from the City of Charlottesville, and funding from the United Daughters of the Confederacy. The last marker we'll visit is called a Bicentennial Tribute. It's a marker given by the Daughters of the American Revolution was installed on All Presidents' Day, April 30th, 1976. It commemorates Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and James Monroe, all presidents that were associated with the courthouse. This concludes our virtual tour. To engage more with community conversations surrounding Court Square, please visit the public input site linked to this video.